A few of you have asked me if I would set up this bike in the touring, touring mode, touring, I was gonna say touring, in the touring mode uh, for a bike packing event to see what I thought of the stiffness of the frame and how it handles the load. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've already installed the racks and I put on some bike packing bags. I did run into one snag, however, and that is with the uh, rear braze on, or rear rack braze on to the dropout here. It's actually a little higher than your typical dropouts place the uh, braze on. This is kind of a unique design. It has a replaceable derailleur hanger. But anyways, so what that did is it actually pushed the rack up a little bit higher. So the normal way to mount this rack is onto the uh, rack mounts at the top here. They're on the inside of the chain stays in this case. And uh, the rack's a little higher. So in order to attach these, I would have to bend them, which is common to do, but I don't want to because I've already bent them a few times. And I've got this rack set up right now to work on my other bike. So I don't want to mess with it just for this experiment. So what I'm gonna do is just get a couple of uh, belay straps here and just kind of strap it up and over the bag. And the idea that we're, what we're gonna do here, and the reason I have the rear rack on is, right now I've got the bags, the panniers on the front rack. So what I would like to do is ride it with the weight on the front and then switch it and ride with the weight on the back. Because some bikes handle weight on the back really well and some don't. So I wanna see what this one does. So I wanna be able to switch from front to back just to kind of try that out. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So uh, let's roll out, check it out, and uh, I'll let you know what my thoughts are. And uh, the mini tour that we're gonna be going on today is over to the cafe. So we've got our adventure mug with us so we can make this a real solid bike adventure. So let's head out and uh, attack this rainy day with the, bike back, with the bike packing bags all set up and ready to ride. Well, I'm just a few minutes here into this ride and I can tell you already that this bike feels really good with the weight on it. The front handling feels very intuitive. The uh, weight is right now on the front and steering is very comfortable. A little bit slower than it was without the weight, but that's to be expected. But it tracks nice and straight. It's not, it doesn't feel hard to steer. Uh, I would have no problem touring like this. It seems very intuitive and uh, very confidence, seems very confidence inspiring, I think is the word. So yeah, I'm liking it so far. All right, so now I'm in rear load mode, rear load mode, and uh, I'll try to talk here. The, it's a little wet out, as I mentioned earlier, but now I've got the load on the back of the bike here. I've got the panniers on the back. No load on the front. And uh, the steering comes right back into how it felt unloaded. And the frame is carrying the weight really, really well. There's, the flex of the frame feels like it just came into its own. It feels like my other bike with the with the smaller diameter tubing so it's a really smooth ride and you still get a little bit of that kind of feel a little bit of flex in the frame when you're pedaling a little bit in the top too but definitely definitely stiff and able to carry the weight very well so I have no reason to believe that this bike couldn't add another 10 or 15 pounds on the front, so I could even do a little bit heavier loaded tour if I wanted to with this bike. Uh, I could throw slick tires on it, make it a road touring bike, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of options here. So really, this is the bike that, this is really the bike that that, that is missing from my, my current lineup. So, we're gonna have to make a, we're gonna have to make this a new addition, I think. All right, well, we are out on our final ride on this bike. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take it back to John tomorrow. So today is the last day I get a chance to ride it. And unlike yesterday, the sun came out and it's perfect, it's a beautiful day. So a perfect day to get one last ride in and share my thoughts on this bike, talk about what it taught me, as well as some of the changes as a result of this bike that I'm going to be making on the bike that I was designing for my dirt touring expedition bike. So I'm just gonna get up here at the top of this climb and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, summarize and conclude this video. Easy up here so I'm kind of concerned about the audio I know I've had bad audio in the past and it's been very annoying so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up this descent get back down get home and uh, set up some good audio so I can uh, explain my thoughts without any kind of wind distraction or anything so See, am I in the picture? Just a little bit. So I just got back here from the ride and uh, yeah, let's summarize this, uh, this experience. Uh, I know I was, when I first got this bike, I was looking at basically three different main features of this bike. And that is the uh, front handling, the front steering and geometry, and then the tubing sizes really specifically to the frame stiffness. And then I was looking at the tire and wheel size. So let's, since we're here at the front of the bike, let's just go ahead and start with the front, the steering. And uh, as a reminder, this was a, this is a 71 degree head tube angle. And there is, I think something like 62 millimeters of fork offset, which ended up with a 60 millimeter trail. I find that it's really good for like an all-rounder bike. It's uh, it's good on a flat road when you're just cruising along and you don't want to have to manage the bike. You don't want to micromanage the, the feel and you can just kind of point it and it goes where you want it to. Uh, but climbing, it still has enough uh, give to it or enough, I don't know how you describe it, but you know, if you need to correct, you know, keep your balance, it keeps your balance really well. Uh, and on the downhills, it also is really stable. So I feel like it's a very kind of good all-round front geometry. It's not probably going to work really perfect for, you know, it's not probably the best downhill if you're going to be doing like some downhill off-road racing or something. But, but for just an all-around bike, I think it's good. Uh, so I think I've summarized that pretty well. So let's go on to the tubing diameter and the frame stiffness. So again, double oversized down tube and an oversized top tube. Um, this was a really big difference for me since I'm coming from standard diameter tubing with really thin wall thickness. And, I'm, and I've got one bike that has an oversized down tube but a standard diameter top tube. My Specialized Expedition had standard diameter tubing, a little bit thicker walls but still standard diameter and still fairly flexible. So jumping all the way up to this double oversized down tube and oversized top tube, I was really interested to see what my impressions were going to be. And uh, that's one of the things that surprised me the most about this bike. And I actually really like it. I, if I don't get this particular bike, if I can't convince John to sell me this bike, uh, then I will probably still stick with a double oversized down tube and an oversized top tube. It's just when you load it up, it just really handles for me at my weight. I'm 100 and about 160, 165 pounds. And at my weight, with the weight on the bike, it's just solid. It handles really well. 
Now this is not really thick wall tubing. It's actually still has a fairly thin budding profile, but it, but because of the diameter, that's where the stiff where you really get that stiffness from, while maintaining a fairly lightweight bike. This bike, I weighed it. It was uh, right around 22 pounds, 22 and a half pounds, something like that. And that's with the water bottle cages and the pedals. And actually, yeah, I took the I did take this bag off. So without the bag. Uh, so that's pretty light overall for a steel frame bike with tires that big. Um, that's that's pretty good. It also has a dropper post and 46 millimeter wide bars measured at the at the hoods here and 57 I think at the the dropouts. But anyway, or the the, the drops. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I do like the oversized tubing. Would I pick it if I so? Here's what I would say about it. I would not choose this tube set if this was going to be my only bike and I was planning to do a lot of day-to-day -day riding and I was planning to do uh, just a few tours on it. I don't think it would be worth going to this stiffness for that reason. But since I have a couple of other bikes, uh, um, for me it's nice to have something that's different and something that fills in a void that I, that I have. So for me, the tube set's really going to be, it's going to favor bike touring and that's what I plan to use it for and then the occasional ride it like a mountain bike without it being a mountain bike. That is what was really good about this. Yesterday when I tested it with the weight on, I was able to ride it with the weight on the front and on the back. In both ways it worked fine. So again, just another reason why I'm going to stick with the oversized tubing because I want to be able to put all the weight on the back if I, if I want to. All right, now the last thing that uh, we were looking into was the wheel and tire size. So if you recall from the video where we went over the frame geometry, I was considering 700C as an option. Uh, but my concern was that Miss Cools and I go on bike tours together and we want to be able to share equipment if we need to. And it's really nice to have the same size wheels and tires so that we can share tubes, if one of us has a mechanical problem with our wheels or hubs, we can swap wheels if we need to. So that kind of thing. So I think it's good to both have the same size wheel. And so uh, that's what I was looking at. I wanted to see if Miss Cools would, be bene would benefit from a bigger wheel. Uh, but for her frame being that it's a little bit smaller and compact, that bigger wheel starts to really create a lot of design challenges. And that is, you know, with toe overlap and just having a kind of a big bike anyways. So I wanted to really experiment with this. And honestly, I think for a touring bike, these tires roll great. They roll really fast on off-road situations. Uh, and they don't feel like I'm being limited. I don't feel like off-road I'm somehow would, would, not that 700C isn't necessarily faster, especially on really technical stuff. But for a bike like this, where you know you're already under biking as it is, you know it's got the rim brakes, um, you know it's it's got a rigid fork, so there's only so much you can really do. You know you can't really get super super sendy and super gnarly with it, uh, but you can ride a lot of different terrain. And to have this smaller wheel, it's just a slightly smaller wheel. It's a lighter, it's a little bit lighter weight. Uh, it it works well, and you know it handles well, it steers well, and a bike that you want to be able to kind of navigate through switchbacks and stuff, it's a good, it works. It works really well. And so, and the fact that it's going to work really well on my bike and for Miss Cools, I think it's kind of just, it's pretty much decided that we're going to stick with the 650B. I hope I've summarized everything. I know as soon as I turn off the camera, I'm going to remember I forgot to say something, but, but that's it for now. Uh, so anyway, it's a great bike. Love it. I'm going to try to get this one if I can. If not, then uh, we'll get one that's, John will hopefully build one for me that's very close to it. So yeah, I'm really excited and uh, can't wait to take it out and do some real touring on it. Really excited. I'm actually really excited to do that. Now that a bike, I can ride a bike that's not going to be so noodly. It's just, yeah, it's going to be really cool. So anyway, hey. Thank you all for all the wonderful feedback on the last video. I really appreciate all the comments and I uh, look forward to reading all of your comments on this video. So thanks again, stay tuned and we'll see you soon.